Giannis, how have you been able to keep such a narrow focus in your life, basketball and your family? Uh, you know, I have people around me that help me with that. Uh, you know, my family, they keep me uh, grounded um, to the floor, down to earth, and uh, you know, that definitely helps me, you know, uh, keep my focus in basketball and what's important to my family. What does it mean for you to have your family, not just at games, but at the practice facility, your brothers come and play ball with you at night, your family will eat dinner with your team chef, to have them around all of this? Uh, you know, it means a lot. I always want my family to feel involved and uh, they'll be really involved. Giannis, what was life like for you in the NBA before your family was able to move to the United States? Uh, life in the NBA was kind of hard. Um, you know, when I came over here, I was 18 years old. Um, I didn't know much. I couldn't speak the language well. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but, you know, I think I had great people around me. Uh, I had people from the organization that helped me on a daily basis um, to get groceries, to, uh, you know, open up a bank account or to uh, get an apartment, all those little things that, you know, uh, a person should have, should have known. You know, a person that plays in the NBA should have known how to do those stuff, but I definitely did not know nothing. Um, uh, it was kind of hard, you know. I, was, I grew up with my family. I never left uh, the country before that, prior to me get, getting drafted, and uh, just not having my family around, it was uh, the first moment stuff. Did that time really drive you into work and being in the gym and just spending your time that way because you were lonely. Yeah, I didn't had, I didn't had nothing to do. You know, uh, I was, I was in the gym all day. I was sleeping in the gym. Um, I didn't had nothing to do. Like I was going back home and I, I couldn't even watch TV. I didn't know how to work the TV over here. Uh, so it was it made, it made my job a lot easier. You know, just spending as much time as I could in the gym until. You know, my family came around. There's work in the NBA and working at your game and your craft. What did work mean to you when you were growing up in Athens and the kind of work you first were brought up on? Uh, you know, um, like I started, like, you know, when we're practicing and um, we're done practicing, usually, you know, work a little bit more and uh, people look at me crazy and say, like, you know, why, why are you working? more because it's a habit that, you know, uh, I have since I was a little kid, you know, because back in the day we had to work until we sold something, until we uh, was able to, uh, you know, have money to buy uh, a plate of food, you know, to provide that night with, you know, provide ourselves with food that night. Uh, and I think it's a habit that I've had since I was a little kid. It came from my parents, you know, saw them working every day. Um, so something stick stick with me. The time you spent with your brothers on the sidewalk selling sunglasses, trinkets, when you're in the gym now and you're putting in time, do you still think about those days and how far you've come from there? Yeah, there's moments. Uh, you know, there's a lot of up, ups and downs in the NBA. And um, in the down moments, I always think about, you know, where I was, where my family was, and where we are right now. and. That uh, this journey has been unbelievable. Um, I would never uh, ever thought that I'd be sitting in this chair right now and um, living this dream that I'm living right now. Uh, but it's it's all like all this that I'm going through right now. It's because of what me and my family went through back then. Uh, I think it gets you mentally uh, tough and uh, strong, and uh, it helps you. Uh, helps you to approach this journey that right now we're going through right now uh, way easier. What's the best advice you've gotten about what it takes to be great in the NBA and how you need to work on your game? Um, the first time I was talking about being great, you know, greatness, I think it would be with uh, Jason Kidd and uh, Sean Sweeney. They told me you got to do it every day. Uh, you got to work more. Than anybody else, um, gotta take care of everybody, uh, and you gotta be consistent. You gotta want it more than anybody, anybody else out there. 
Giannis, since Mike Budenholzer became head coach, he's instituted lockout days, meant to essentially keep players out of the practice facility, a lot of it targeted at you for you to be able to get your rest. Has that worked on you? No, uh, it definitely hasn't worked. Um, I always found ways to uh, sneak in here, and uh, usually in lockout days, um, the coaches are not here either. Uh, so if there's no coach over here, I'll probably work at my, at my house. I have a weight room over there. Uh, I'll find ways to uh, you know, get my work in because um, I try to always get better. I, I don't like, uh, I get the philosophy and the coach wants us to rest and take care of our bodies, but I'm, uh, I'm you know, I approach the game a little bit differently. I, w I want to get better every day. How have you had to work through that with your coach, th those two differing philosophies that you guys have on, on how to treat your body? Uh, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, he's definitely have helped me more, uh, you know, to take, uh, you know, take care of my body more serious and uh, um, taking the rest and breaks. Uh, but uh, I always want to, you know, work. I always want to do something. Like when I see that, I feel like, I'm being lazy, and uh, he knows that. Uh, he knows that I want to get better. He knows that I want to play hard, and I want to help the team uh, be great. Uh, but I think uh, he's done a great job just sometimes telling me, yeah, you got to take a break. When you're not working, do you start to think about, I wonder if James Harden's in the gym right now? I wonder if LeBron James is in the gym, the people you have to compete against. Is that what you start thinking about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I always think about uh, the best players and what the best players in this league do. Um, like yesterday, I saw, uh, I saw a clip of uh, James Harden after the game uh, working out. Uh, and definitely when you see something like that, you, you know, I don't know if someone else thinks the same way I think, but uh, I want to do more. Uh, I want to get to that, you know, get to that uh, level, um, that James Harden level, you know, that he, uh, being able to go out there, score 61 points, and still go back to the gym and have the mentality to get better. So uh, if he does it, I'm going to try to do even more. When you see a player like Harden has <clears throat> 61, that kind of a performance, you're in an MVP race, do you think, OK, tomorrow night I'm going to go out and show something nah, too? No. Nah. Uh, I think uh, anybody else in my position would probably think that. Uh, I just I just want to be. Uh, able to go out there tomorrow and uh, try to help my team win and get myself uh, mentally and physically ready you know, for, the real, for the real games. Giannis, you told the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel recently, a lot of people say that I can be the face of the league. And lately people have told me that I cannot be the face of the league because I'm not American, I don't have the American culture in me. How much do you think about that? Uh, uh, the, um, it was a question that um, they asked me and they answered the question. Um, it's not that I think about it every day. I don't, actually. But, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, statements out there that, you know, he cannot be the first, the face of the league. Um, he doesn't have that swag. Uh, he's not American enough. Um, stuff like that. Uh, because of my personality being low profile and do not want to uh, put myself out there as much as other players want to put themselves out there. And um, what I said is that uh, if I cannot be the face of the league, being myself and uh, do what I do, I'm good. I'll, I'm good. What does it mean to you to stay closer, stay true to your Greek, your Nigerian roots? You know, it means it means a lot. Um, definitely. Uh, Staying close to my roots, representing both of my countries, uh, means a lot. Uh, previously, a couple of days ago, um, usually I see a lot of Greek flags uh, when I play. And uh, a couple of days ago, I saw a guy holding like a Greek flag and a Nigerian flag out there. And you know, I think that was one of the coolest moments I've ever had uh, playing in the NBA. Uh, just people recognize that I represent both of those the country and uh, always try to be true in my roots, that, that means a lot to me. When you see that, is that something that makes you think about your family, your, your late father? Are, are those some of the thoughts that go to, to seeing something like that in the stands? Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, whenever I see uh, the Greek flag, I always think about, you know, my childhood, uh, myself, uh, just being, you know, raised and born in Greece. But definitely when I see that uh, you know, Nigeria flag, I know that my parents are extremely proud. And, you know, my dad watching from above, I know he'll be with a smile on his face. Giannis, what are you not willing to change about yourself in this league? I'm definitely not going to change my personality, change, you know, who I am. Uh, I'm not going to change for nobody, and uh, not for the NBA, not, not for the media, not for anything. Uh, I know where I came from. I know where I started from. Um, I know what I've, me and my family have been through. Uh, it's something that I take pride in. Like, uh, I always joke around with my little brothers because uh, I got four brothers. I don't know if uh, you probably know, I don't know if the people know, but um, my brothers don't have accents. I'm the only one that has accent when I talk, and uh, they always, you know, joke around, make fun of me that when are you going to change your accent, when are you going to start talking a little bit more, uh, you know, Americanized. And you no know, accent, I'm like, nah, this is who I am, you know. I take uh, pride of uh, who I am. I take pride of uh, what my family uh, did, and um, that's how it's going to be. A lot of stars in the NBA have a lot of close relationships, very public close relationships with people they compete against. Why don't people see that from you? I don't know. Uh, was uh, Kobe ever close with his? Uh... Nope. Yeah, like was Kevin Garnett ever close with his uh, the guys he played against, or Jordan, or all these guys, LeBron? Um, it's I think it's just being just being competitive. If I know that I'm gonna play against them and I'm gonna see them in the playoffs, or I'm gonna see them in many more years to come, uh, it's uh, I try to stay away, and not build a relationship because I know that you know, when I get on the court, I'm gonna go 100 percent, and uh, maybe. Uh, you know, if I build a relationship with somebody uh, or I'm close to somebody, he probably expect me to go 50% or take it easy on him. Uh, but that's, I want things holding me back when I go out there and play. What happens when an opponent tries to help you up off the court? Well, um, not, I just usually uh, give him a hand and if he is willing to help me up, yeah, of course, uh, he can help me up. It's always looked like you'd prefer a teammate to help you up than somebody you're playing against, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, usually uh, in the NBA, we stay down on the floor and uh, wait till a teammate come and help you up. And uh, sometimes, you know, um, oh, um, the guys we play against, they're always willing to help me up, but I always prefer my teammate helping me up because it builds, um, it builds a good, good habits for the team. If your coach this season had left you in a lot of your blowout wins allowed you to play more minutes. How many more 40 point, 45 point, maybe 50 point games would you probably have? Uh, if I say, if I say more, a lot more, it'll, it'll sound selfish. <laughs> uh, I I love that we've been in, uh, you know, teams by 15, 20, and uh, like last night I didn't play the fourth quarter. I love that. You know, uh, um, he allows me to. Um, rest my body and take a break. But definitely if I, I played more minutes, uh, uh, I'll probably have a lot of 40, 50, whatever, 30 points games um, in this season. Your coach is obviously doing it to keep your body rested fresh for a deep playoff run. Other people will look and say, you need to do some of that to be MVP in the league. How, how do you see it? Uh, I just love the approach that uh, my coach uh, is taking right here. Uh, it's not about being in and um, trying to chase numbers and have 30, 35 points game. He like he can do that. He can do that. But um, he's trying to prepare me for what matters the most uh, and being ready for the playoffs. And uh, because at the end of the day, uh, there's there's a bigger trophy down uh, in the end of this road that's waiting for somebody to uh, take and uh, I, I, I love the way he uh, he re he uh, make me rest at the end of the games. How do you think people should judge a most valuable player in the NBA? What's the criteria people should be using? It's, it's all about winning. It's all about winning. Um, in my opinion, you know, I don't know how the fans go 
judges the media is going to judge it or the NBA. But uh, in my opinion, uh, it's it's all about winning. It's all about uh, putting your team in uh, a spot that they can be successful. Giannis, you have a one hundred million dollar contract now. You have millions more and endorsements, and a couple of years you could sign one of those two hundred million dollar super maxes. I don't know. <laughs> right? Yes. 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 Why are you so careful with your money? Um, I think I'm careful uh, with my money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not cheap. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I spend a lot of money. Careful for my is not family. cheap. Yes. Right? Uh, because a lot of people think that I'm cheap, but I'm not. I spend a lot of money uh, in my family, but I, I'll spend money on myself. Um, but I'm just careful with my money because I know the, va the value of money. You know, but a lot of people out there think that you know a lot of NBA players just spend their money and uh, blow through the money, do whatever they want. But uh, you know, the way I grew up and the way that we fought every day and work every day to have money. Uh, even though now I've signed a hundred million dollar deal, I got money from endorsements. Uh, I, I think I never lost that value, you know, of money, and I uh, hope I never lose it. How long were you in the NBA before you would allow yourself to buy first class airplane tickets back to Greece? Uh, I think the first time I bought a first class ticket uh, was my fourth year in the league after I signed my contract. Um, my older brother, Nancy, told me, okay, sign. Like we cannot be a city back uh, coach in back next to uh, next to the cabin or talk, or how you guys could say restroom. The restroom. Yeah, you know, in the plane, and uh, <laughs> so we gotta move move uh, up front up front, and uh, you know, since then, whenever my family flies or uh, we fly, I always try to uh, get the first class tickets. W would you get exit rows at least? Back then, I tried to get the exit rows, but if it wasn't available or if they charged me more, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm not going to lie to you. I was trying to save my mind because, you know, when you're a rookie, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you might get injured and never sign a contract. You never know because you have an opportunity to make some money your first uh, couple of two or three uh, first years in the league, so you got to take advantage of that. Uh, you might... Uh, what I was telling my family uh, every day back then, uh, when we were talking, that they were telling me you're gonna sign a contract in the next guy. I'm like, I know, but I gotta stay healthy. You know, I gotta do the right thing. Um, and you never know, knock on wood, what can happen tomorrow. So now that we have this uh, money that I'm making right now, we gotta make sure we can have it, and uh, you know, for the long run, we can have it for years. And I was trying to save and make sure that uh, it wasn't just money that we just blew. Uh, it was money that, you know, we can, I, can, I can provide for my family and provide for my future family also. So that's why I wasn't uh, spending my money any, you know, anyhow. When you were selling sunglasses, the trinkets on the sidewalk in Athens, how much would you have to come up with in the course of a day to be able to go buy groceries? It, it was different every day. Um, usually, you know, our end was probably like um, 300 euros. So we had to sell enough to pay that man. And after that, we went out and tried to sell. And if we had to sell like 10, 15 dollars, we just went home, get some food and ate. That was it.